Hey everyone, Cole from MDG Mondays here. Today I'm going to talk a bit about one of my favorite ways to play Magic. It's called Kitchen Table Magic. You guys probably already know what that is. But it's a format of awesome decks and crazy ideas. And I'm just going to go over a few of my favorite cards and decks that I've played in the past. And let's go check it out. Alright, these three cards have a pretty big significance for a deck that I used to absolutely love. Um, back in the day I used to play a Reanimator deck. And I know you guys have seen Reanimator decks a lot, but... The one that I played was very, very unique in the way that it won. Um, my deck was pumped full of huge creatures that were really, really good. I used, um, I think, Iona and a whole bunch of other good ones that are used in other reanimators today, but the way I would get them out and do things is I would use stuff like Exhum and other reanimate spells, like the classic Zombify and everything like that. And my goal was to try to get a Hellcarver Demon in play and somehow make it so it can attack and deal some damage. Um, I would get those other cards in my graveyard by things like Careful Study and a few other cards that uh, normal reanimator decks played. But the main the main star of the deck was Hellcarver Demon. Uh, he reads, when he deals combat damage to a player, you sacrifice all other permanents that you control and discard your, your hand, exile the top six cards of your library, then you may cast any number of of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. And if I had a handful of huge creatures and everything like that, and I could discard it with him, I could exile the top six, and hopefully I would get, you know, two, three, four different reanimate uh, targets and or spells and just throw them onto the battlefield. Wouldn't have any lands or anything like that, so I'm, I was kind of susceptible to a few things, but Usually, if I could land an Iona and stuff like that, it was pretty much game over. Uh, this deck was really, really fun. I had it for a long time, but then I ended up taking it apart. I took it apart for my next deck. So the next deck that I put together was my Reality Acid deck. And this is when I started to realize that blue was an extremely powerful color. I started to realize the concept of control and the concept of taking away people's uh, resources and everything like that. And I, uh, the mainstay of the deck was Reality Acid. This card right here... Um, I read it one day, and inside I was like, oh my gosh, if I can break this somehow, it would be amazing. It also reads, when Reality Acid leaves play, Enchanted Permanence Controller sacrifices it. So I was able to shut people's colors off if they were really, really color-hungry for a deck. I was able to take care of problem creatures and problem enchantments and artifacts and stuff like that. It was kind of mana-intensive, and I did have to worry about things like Shroud and whatnot. But there was a ways around it. I had um, Simic Guild Mage, which allowed me to move auras um, under the same controller. And it got around Shroud, which was really cool. Um, but then I would play with other things that would bounce it back to my hand. Like Dream Stalker, um, Drake Familiar, Veldikin Mastermind, Boomerang. And then and the best card of the deck was Cloudstone Curio, which reads, if you play a non-land card permanent, um, you're able to return another permanent of that type. So, you know, if you play another enchantment, you can return an enchantment. So for three mana, I could put down a Reality Acid, and if I had another one in my hand, I could pay another three to put this down, pick this one back up, causing me to sacrifice that that um, permanent that it was on. Now, this deck, I still have together. I still play it to this day. Um, it's a little different now. It's more of a... It, my, my starting uh, Reality Acid deck was a green-blue one. And now it has turned into a green, or a, excuse me, a blue-white one with Venser and Rock's, uh, Rock's Dire Horn and stuff like that to make them skip their battle phase. It's a little more tuned now. Um, I still, I like playing the deck, but everybody hates playing it, so I never play it anymore. <laughs> all right, and the last deck I'm going to talk about today was uh, one of my all-time favorites. I still want to put this back together and make it actually work for something like Modern or something like that. Um, it was my Near-Death Experience deck. Uh, back when Near-Death Experience came out, I read the card and I was like, wow, this thing, this just makes you win the game. And actually on my channel, if you look at some of my old videos, which eh, I don't really recommend it, but some of the first gameplays that I did were actually of this deck against one of my friends. And it, it was really fun. Um, it won a few times. It was doing really good against the, against the, Thopter, the Thopter Sword combo. Um, so basically the combo of the deck is you play Near-Death Experience, pass your turn, um, at the end of their turn, you cast Plunge into Darkness, which says, choose one, you can sacrifice any number of creatures, and you gain three life for each creature, or you can pay X life, look at the top X cards of your library, and put one in your hand. So, your goal, really, was to pay 19 life, um, and hope that they didn't have a way to kill you if you didn't have an Angel's Grace in your hand. That sounds sketchy, but, I mean, sometimes it actually just worked. 
But if, if you had an Angel's Grace in your hand, you were able to cast Plunge into Darkness, go down from 19, and then you were able to uh, play Angel's Grace to make it so they couldn't kill you with a Lightning Bolt or anything like that, because it has Split Second, which is really nice. Uh, another thing you could do is, if they were to attack you, um, and you were at, say, 5 or something like that, you can just Angel's Grace it, go down to 1, end your turn, win with this. Um, there was also another creature in there, I think his name was Wall of Blood. Um, you want to do all the life sacrificing and everything at instant speed, so that's why I put this in, in the Wall of Blood. But the Wall of Blood just said pay one life and give it plus one, one zero, I think. Um, so this deck was a lot of fun. It was really explosive and it just won out of nowhere. The hardest part of the deck was to get to the, the triple white, um, but the, I mean, one of the best things is I could use the pain lands. I could use the um, the shock lands and the caves of Koilos and everything like that because it didn't really care. And city of brass and now mana confluence. Um, so this was by far probably my my favorite combo oriented um, kitchen table magic deck that I've ever played with. And uh, I definitely am going to put this back together and I'll have a deck tech on it sometime soon. I'm still working on getting all the cards back for it, so we'll see. Well, everybody, that's it. Um, those were my f some of my favorite combos and decks that I had played uh, through Kitchen Table Magic. I still play a lot of Kitchen Table Magic today. The shop that I go to is actually primarily a Kitchen Table Magic shop. It's very, very small and a lot of people don't really have enough money to build standard decks or modern decks and stuff like that. So a lot of the games I play are just, they're for fun. They're people just getting into the game and having fun so i play some fun decks and i encourage you guys to go out and play some kitchen table magic as well sometimes it's a lot more fun to win with a near-death experience than it is to win with some crazy combo that somebody else did on the pro tour it's cool to say that you can build a really cool deck for yourself and have fun doing it and just that's the best part of the game for me is building decks that are just amazingly fun to play amazingly fun to make and the other person has a little bit of fun at least and they're not completely locked out i mean i don't really recommend the reality acid one because it's kind of a super blue deck but it was fun for me to build because that was like the first time that i was able to say oh these cards are really really good i'm gonna put these together and just control the game i had a purpose and i made the deck so hey if you guys like my content and want to see more go ahead and click subscribe right up there I talk about Commander, I talk about Modern, uh, Legacy, Standard, I talk about it all. Right now my favorite formats are Commander and Standard is pretty much up there. And I'll have another Standard deck tech coming to you soon. It's pretty cool. You guys want to stay tuned for that. And don't forget to check out my last video where I talk about the Darium CCG crate, the player's crate. I open another one. It's amazing as always. But I open another one and I have a nice little giveaway. So if you guys want to win a commander deck for Christmas, go ahead and check that video out. It'll be in the description below and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.